Good afternoon and welcome to the NDTV YouTube page. We're going to run through some of the big stories today. Well, one of the stories that we've uh, looked at very closely in the past, something which I have personally covered, came up in the Supreme Court today, the Rafal issue, and the Supreme Court has decided to dismiss the review petitions in the case. Now, this is essentially a massive victory, not just for the government, because this had become a major political issue in the run-up to the election, but it's also a major victory for the Indian Air Force, which has always said that unnecessary delays in the process of acquiring these aircraft were a setback to the Air Force as it tries to enhance its fleet size. So what were some of the key points which were mentioned in uh, the Supreme Court today? I'm going to read out a couple of these quotes which would actually give you an idea. Firstly, the broader issue over here is that the Supreme Court said that the review petitions filed by Prashant Bhushan, Arun Shori uh, were, uh, and Yashwan Sinha were without merit and therefore these were dismissed. And here's a quote. We are of the view that the review petitions are without any merit and are accordingly dismissed once again, re-emphasizing that our original decision was based within the contours of Article 32 of the Constitution. When, uh, As far as the uh, allegation of uh, false documents being used uh, in this particular case, which was one of the key points uh, which the petitioners had said, that some of the documents which were provided by the government in a sealed envelope were either incomplete or inaccurate, uh, the court said one of the aspects is the same as has been dealt with by our order passed today on the application for correction and thus does not call for any further discussion. No doubt there was a prayer made for registration of an FIR and further investigation, but then once we had examined the three aspects of merits, we did not consider it appropriate to issue any directions. It is not the duty of the court to determine the price of the Rafale deal on the basis of mere suspicion of petitioners. Apples cannot be compared with oranges. The apples versus oranges comparison issue came into play because there was an effort made to compare the deal for 36 jets uh, which this government signed with the non-deal which the previous UPA government was actually looking for which was 126 aircraft, 108 of which were supposed to be manufactured in India by Hindustan Aeronautics. The argument which was raised by the Congress and those opposed to the deal is that that deal, the older one of the UPA, um, would have resulted in aircraft which were considerably cheaper. But the counter argument is that that deal never was a deal because it never got signed, it never got done, because it was mired in a process which was so difficult that it could never be completed, number one. Number two, the argument mentioned by this government is that the aircraft now being acquired uh, is actually cheaper than the aircraft as would have been contracted had the previous deal gone through. So the Supreme Court has actually made a very important um, verdict or a statement as part of its verdict on this particular air, uh, particular part of the deal on whether you can compare the old deal and this deal. And their point is, I'm going to repeat this, it's important, it is not the duty of the court to determine price of the Rafale deal on the basis of mere suspicion of the petitioners. Apples cannot be compared with oranges. What's more, it is not the function of this court to determine the prices, nor for that matter can such aspects be dealt with on mere suspicion of persons who decide to approach the court. The internal mechanism of such pricing would, be take, would take care of the situation. Um, and there were some very harsh words which were actually used for the petitioners in this case. And I should mention that this was a unanimous verdict. All three judges uh, agreed and decided to dismiss the review petitions. Um, they've said that um, it does appear that the endeavor of the petitioners is to construe themselves as an appellate authority to determine each aspect of the contract and call upon the court to do so. We do not believe this to be the jurisdiction to be exercised. What's more, the, the court said all aspects were considered by the competent authority and the different views expressed considered and dealt with. It would be well nigh become impossible for different opinions to be set out in the record. The issue of opinions is also another key part of the Rafale controversy. 
because it was brought out in various publications, including the Hindu, that there was a very strong divergence of views as far as the process of getting the Rafal deal signed. Uh, there were documents which were produced which indicated dissent within the contract negotiating team looking at the, uh, at the Rafal process within the defense ministry. Uh, however, the, the counter argument to that is that yes, there was an element of dissent, in fact quite a serious element of dissent, but ultimately these were various opinions and the documents or these areas of differences were sorted out. And in writing, there were signatures uh, indicating that a lot of the ministry officials who had problems with the process of the deal signed on and that that file went to the cabinet, uh, cabinet Committee on Security before the process moved forward. And this is what the Supreme Court is looking for. Uh, if each opinion was to be construed as to be complied with before the contract was entered into, it would defeat the very purpose of debate in the decision-making process. In other words, yes, there was debate. Debate is natural. People would agree, people would disagree, but the deal would eventually go through. And finally, we decline to once again embark on an elaborate exercise of analyzing each clause, perusing what may be the different opinions, then taking a call whether the final decision should or should not have been taken in such technical matters. So the government and the Rajnath Singh and I believe Nirmala Sitaraman, who was then the defense minister when all of this controversy happened, has have piped in now and they've welcomed the verdict of the Supreme Court. Another part of the Supreme Court's verdict had to do with Rahul Gandhi. Now, remember, during the election campaign, um, the Chokidar Chodhe refrain of Rahul Gandhi was uh, very much a part of the election campaign of the Congress party. Uh, the Supreme Court was, uh, there was a defamation case, which was actually, there was a contempt case, which was actually filed against Rahul Gandhi by uh, a senior leader of the BJP saying that some of his remarks had also raised questions on the Supreme Court and its handling of the Rafal case. To this Rahul Gandhi, when the court uh, case did go up, apologized profusely, profusely. he um, unequivocally apologized for those remarks, mentioned that it was all said in the heat of the campaigning. Now, he was excused, let off by the Supreme Court today uh, with the warning that, you know, he needed to be careful before ascribing motives and the like in this particular case. So that's another part of the deal which has taken place. And finally, one way or the other, irrespective of where this verdict went, India would most likely still have ended up acquiring this aircraft, uh, the Rafale 36 of which we are talking about. These are the jets which have been acquired in that mega 58,000 crore rupee deal because more than 50% of the value of that deal has already been paid. As far as the contract terms are concerned, there needed to be an upfront payment of 50% for the deal to be processed. Um, these, this is the Rafale in the colors of the Indian Air Force. This is actually the very first Rafale aircraft which was manufactured for India. The Rafale delivery schedule is very much uh, on track. The first aircraft get delivered tomorrow. Two of the aircraft for India are presently in flight testing. I believe a third one is either already in flight testing or will be in flight testing soon. So the contract is being fulfilled according to the conditions which were laid out. There is no delay or anything else over there. So sooner than later, these jets would actually come into the Indian Air Force next year. But there are important aspects of the Rafale deal one briefly needs to look at as well. Does this judgment set a precedent whereby it is acceptable for a government to say that there is a Supreme Court order which has has on the basis of which we do not need to provide the detailed breakup of pricing of defense deals because in the case of Rafale, this was not done because of secrecy agreements, in which case, where does the primacy of parliament uh, uh, exist? That is a question that many opposed to this deal would still argue. They would say that at the end of the day, if the entire exercise was to get more transparency in the process of defense uh, acquisitions, then perhaps today's verdict has not done enough in that regard.